Hello and welcome. My name is Kenne. I'm one of the co-founders and instructors here at the Graph Courses. And uh, by way of an introduction to this course, I'm going to be taking you through the answers to three key questions. One of those is why data science? Why should you be learning data science now? Two is why Python? Why should you choose Python as the language to learn? And three is why now? Why is now a particularly good time to be getting into data science with Python? So let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin with a quick clarification on key terms. You may hear the phrases data scientist and data analyst used, and you may not know the difference. These are actually very similar roles. So both data analysts and data scientists are going to be doing some programming, some data transformation, data visualization and statistics. But in addition, the data scientist usually will be building and deploying machine learning models while a data analyst will not usually be doing those. So in this presentation, I may talk interchangeably about data scientists and data analysts. They're very similar roles. So let's get started with our first question, why data science? I'm gonna summarize the main points and then I'll go into them in detail. Why should you be learning data science? Because simply data skills are in very high demand. Businesses, governments, and research organizations need data analysts for decision-making. Okay, the data science market is particularly accessible because you can build and use your data skills really from anywhere. And finally, data skills are valuable outside of the stereotypical data analyst and data scientist roles as well. So now let's dig deeper into each of these points. I'll start by telling you about this guy, Mark Andreessen, who is a famous internet founder from the early days of the internet. And in 2011, he wrote this article in the Wall Street Journal on why software is eating the world. And what does he mean by software is eating the world? Well, very simply, if you look at the rate of growth of software and IT-based services compared to the global economy, you see that software seems to be outpacing uh, the rest of the economy. So here is data from the World Bank showing uh, from the years 2000 to 2022, the average uh, GDP growth uh, from uh, IT services as a subset, and then the rest of the, the economy. And as you can see, software-based industries seem to be growing uh, much faster. And Mark Andreessen puts it like this, six decades into the computer revolution and two decades into the rise of the modern internet, all of the technology required to transform industries through software finally works and can be widely delivered at global scale. So because more and more people have access to internet connected devices, more and more businesses and services are being run as online software. And something that you might know, or maybe you don't know, is that software relies on databases. So the way any piece of software you pick up will usually work is that there's some front end, which is the part of the software that you see on your PC or on your phone or on your smartwatch. All of that is usually running on a server, a server farm somewhere, which is just a big fancy computer. And the data that is powering your application is being stored in some kind of database. And what is a database? You can think of a database usually as just a collection of data tables. Here is a simple schema, a simple schematic of what a database might look like for someone who is selling property. Here's a more realistic picture. This is a real uh, database schema from the MediaWiki organization. And so we are moving towards a world where every business process, every purchase, every client interaction leaves a digital footprint in some database somewhere. This explosion of data is transforming industries across the board and also presenting a unique challenge. How do we make sense of it all? And so organizations need more and more data scientists and data analysts to answer data-driven questions across the value chain. For example, in retail, companies need to harness and understand large amounts of data to answer core questions like, what's the optimal stock level for each product? or how do seasonal trends affect our sales? In finance, banks and investment firms need to constantly analyze data patterns to understand questions like, what factors indicate a high-risk loan? Or how do we identify suspicious transactions, ideally in real time? The healthcare industry is also undergoing a data-driven transformation, so that now increasingly medical professionals can answer questions like, which treatment protocols yield the best outcomes for this particular patient? So we're moving into an era of personalized medicine. Or a question like, how do we predict and prevent hospital readmissions? So as a result of this need for people to help make sense of data, 
the demand for data skills has been growing. Here is a chart showing uh, the proportion of jobs on the website indeed.com that have the phrase uh, data scientist in them. So the proportion of all jobs that are advertised for data scientists. And as you can see between the years 2012 and 2016, uh, this trend line was just a straight line up. This particular time series stops at 2016 because in 2016, Indeed.com shut down the service that lets us uh, get this kind of analysis. But for a more up-to-date take, we can look at these projections from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is the official body in the United States uh, that collates data and makes predictions about uh, the labor market. And it makes this prediction that these are going to be the 10 fastest growing occupations in the decade 2022 to 2032. And as you can see, data scientists are on there as number three. And here are the absolute numbers there for those of you who are interested. So indeed, data science is one skill set that we know is going to continue to grow in need and in popularity. And unlike many of these other uh, areas that are growing, data science is uniquely attractive for a number of reasons. One of those is that it does not necessarily need a formal degree. Why does it not need a formal degree? Because your project, your work, can serve as direct evidence of your competence. And that competence can also be easily assessed in an interview context. This is quite different from, for example, nurse practitioners. You can't become a nurse by showing that, hey, I took very good care of my cousins, therefore I have the qualifications. It's hard to really show uh, your expertise. And because of regulations, you need that formal qualification. Not so with uh, data science. Another benefit of uh, data science as a career or as a skill set is that it can be learned online. So you can just learn it from home. You don't need to quit, quit your job or start an expensive degree. Okay. And similarly, it is remote work friendly. So because you can work online, the global job market uh, becomes accessible to you. You don't need to worry too much about visa woes. And a final thing on the point of data science skills is that if you just look at data scientists and data analyst roles, you will end up underestimating the demand for data skills. Why? Because any decision maker, really any office worker, any knowledge worker can benefit from uh, data skills. Okay, You can benefit from gaining data literacy so you can understand the metrics behind your business Okay, or your area of expertise. You can benefit from data skills so you can do your own basic data analysis. You can pull your own reports. You don't need to wait to hire a data analyst for your organization. And importantly, when you learn data science, you learn some basic programming skills that you can apply to automate uh, tasks in your organization. This is especially important in the age of large language models like ChatGPT. If you learn how to program, you can integrate the intelligence of these models into uh, pipelines to automate uh, important tasks in your org and improve your efficiency and productivity. Okay, so let's now summarize again why you should be learning data science, okay? So Mark Andreessen says software is eating the world, but as a result, then data is eating the world, okay? So data skills are in high demand because businesses, governments, and research organizations need data analysts and data scientists for decision making, okay? The job market is particularly accessible because you can learn and you can work from anywhere. And data skills are valuable outside of the traditional data analyst and data scientist roles. So now that we've understood the importance and the demand for data science skills, let's now ask why Python? Why is Python the language you should be learning uh, to build these data skills? Well, quite simply, Python is the most in-demand skill for data science. And one of the reasons it's so in-demand is that it's extremely versatile and it's used across a wide range of industries. So let's go into each of these points in a little bit more depth, okay? So Python, like I said, is the most in-demand skill for data analysts and data scientists. Here is a chart from a wonderful website which I recommend you check out, datanerd.tech. And what they do is they analyze job postings across a wide range of job sites. In this case, they've looked at 2.7 million jobs. And they collate the different skill sets mentioned in each of those job postings. So these are job postings for data analysts, data scientists, and data engineers. And as you can see, a Python is top of that list with 55.8% of all jobs asking for that skill set. The second one is SQL, which is something we'll also teach you uh, as part of the graph courses of trajectory. But Python really stands uh, at the top of that uh, list of requirements. And one of the reasons why Python became so popular is that it is very flexible and very extensible. 
So if you consider this scale of software, on the one end you have fixed uh, graphic user interface software like Excel, and on the other hand you have extremely flexible software, Python is definitely on this uh, right hand side. And because it is flexible and importantly open source, there is a wealth of community built packages uh, that are supporting the Python ecosystem. So anyone can build a package or a library that contributes to the functionality of Python. And this is what makes it uh, so powerful as a tool. So you have libraries for data science, for web development, for geospatial analysis, or for big data handling. And because of this, it is used across a wide range of industries. Now these characteristics that I've mentioned actually do apply as well to the R programming language. But uh, for a number of reasons, uh, Python has now beat R to become the dominant uh, data science language. So here is a survey done by the organization Birchworks of data analysts uh, and the different softwares that they use, SAS, R, and Python. And as you can see, uh, Python beat SAS and R in around 2018 based on this uh, time series plot. And we can talk later about why that happened and whether Python really is better than R for data science. But I'll leave that contentious conversation to a different time. What I'll say, though, is that Python definitely has surpassed R as the language de jure for uh, data science. There are a few exceptions, though. There are a few fields where R is definitely still ahead, in particular in academia and more specifically in in social science research and public health research, R is definitely still dominant. So if you're in those areas, you should also consider learning R. And we have courses on that as well. So to summarize what we have said, why should you be learning Python for data science? Because it's the most in-demand skill in the data science field. It is extremely versatile and used across a wide range of industries. Now to our final question, why is now a good time to be learning Python for data science? And uh, for this, I'm going to be talking about three key trends. The first one we've already discussed in depth, which is that there is a high demand for data skills at this point. The second one is more of a question. Maybe at the moment, there is a bit of an oversupply of data analysts and data scientists. Certain people definitely do think this. And the last point is again a question, which is maybe AI and large language models like ChatGPT are making programming obsolete. So maybe you shouldn't learn Python because in two years, uh, AI is going to be writing all the Python code. So why bother? So I've already discussed the demand for data skills. Let's talk about the possible oversupply of data analysts and data scientists. Well, one of the things that I mentioned as a positive of the data science field is that there's a low barrier to entry. You don't necessarily need a degree. Well, one side effect of this, of course, of this low barrier to entry is that there are many new entrants into the field. So many people take some online free courses or do a short boot camp and are trying to become uh, data scientists. And this, according to some, is leading to an overcrowded field for data science. But as someone who has participated in hiring boards for data analysts and data scientists and who has been in the field for a while, I see the pool of uh, data science skills something like the following picture. So we have this swimming pool with a shallow end and a deep end. And as you can see, at the shallow end, we do in fact have quite a crowded pool of folks with what I call shallow skills. But if you move to the deep end, then the uh, talent pool becomes quite uh, sparse. So lots of people with beginner level expertise, but not that many people with uh, deep expertise. And how do you move from this crowded end to this more sparse end of the pool? Well, of course, you need time and you need practice. You also need to have a rich portfolio of projects that demonstrates that you have put in that time and practice. It is helpful to have some specialized knowledge, some subject area that you have existing expertise in or a subject area that you build additional expertise in. So maybe your focus is on data analysis in the health domain or in the finance domain or in the real estate domain or something uh, of that sort. And finally, of course, from an employment perspective, it is always helpful to have a wide network of people that can pull you out of the morass of applicants. And so our role at the graph courses here is going to be to take you from the shallow end of the pool over to the deep end. And how do we do this? Let's think through each of the pillars one by one. In terms of time and practice, we have a nine to 12 month structured learning path composed of a sequence of courses. So we're not going to tell you that, hey, within 10 weeks, you can become a professional data scientist. We realize it really does take more time than that. And so we have a deeply thought through curriculum that will take you through all of the essentials. But importantly, we offer these courses part-time 
and we try to make them as affordable as possible so you don't need to quit your job or take out a big loan. You can learn in tandem with whatever else you are doing in life. In terms of helping you build a rich portfolio, each of our courses comes with a capstone project that you have to work on and you will get feedback on as a demonstration of your competence, something that you can show off on your CV or on your personal portfolio website. And importantly, we'll teach you skills for sharing this kind of work on the web, which is very important. In terms of specialized knowledge, this is something typically that you would bring, but we're going to help you uh, build on that specialized knowledge by uh, making sure that each of our courses have different case studies across a wide range of sectors. So you will get to work, hopefully, with data that looks like the source of data uh, that match your specialty. And we'll also help you find relevant data sets uh, to match that specialty as well. And in terms of helping you build a professional network, of course, you're going to meet a wonderful cohort of uh, co-learners when you join a course. And of course, you'll get access as well to our 300 strong uh, group of cohort alumni. So we have over 300 people now that have graduated from our courses and you get access to that network. And finally, we have a rich network of folks both in industry and in academia, and you can benefit from those connections as well. So back to our list of key trends, we were wondering whether there is indeed an oversupply of data analysts and data scientists. And I'm making the case that uh, actually what we have is an undersupply of folks with a uh, deep expertise and uh, the graph courses can help you get uh, to this level of deep expertise. Let's talk now about this last point, whether AI is making programming obsolete. Well, I'm a very enthusiastic adopter of AI tools for my programming, and so I will be the first person to tell you that these large language model tools offer huge benefits for programmers and for data analysts. And we're not going to teach you to be scared of them. We're going to teach you how to use uh, these models. At the moment, there are kind of three main ways that programmers and data analysts use these LLMs. Um, tools. One of those is kind of as an autocomplete. So something like GitHub Copilot, as you're typing your code, it figures out intelligently probably the next thing you want to type and it fills that in for you. And that's very helpful as a way to speed up your coding. You can also just simply use a chat interface to ask questions about libraries that you're not familiar with, as an example. More recently, we also have tools like Cursor that basically act as an intelligent pair programmer that you can give instructions to, and it makes changes for you in your code base. This is very exciting. You may not know what I'm talking about until we actually look at this, but this is a particularly exciting area. An important caveat, though, to all of these is that they all need significant oversight. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't already have the competence, it is very hard to use these tools uh, intelligently. And these two pictures, which incidentally I used an AI to create, kind of summarize the relationship between you as a programmer and your AI models. So at the beginning, when you are learning how to program, AI is extremely helpful for bringing you up to baseline very quickly. Okay. Uh, the reason why it's so helpful is that you don't need to get stuck on problems anymore. If you get stuck on an easy bug, historically, you would need to spend hours and hours looking on the Internet, on Stack Overflow to solve your problem. But these days, you can solve it very easily. So you can get very quickly up to speed uh, when you are learning how to program. At the point when you become competent, though, when you are now building your own projects, AI will still be helpful, but it's helpful as a kind of eager sidekick or an eager intern. So here's the picture I drew here. You can imagine this AI as it has this chainsaw and it's helping you traverse a path uh, through this wilderness, but you need to tell it what path to cut. You need to tell it what way to go. Otherwise, you will end up in a ditch or a valley somewhere. Okay, so you need the expertise to direct, to lead, and to supervise these AI models. Otherwise, you're not going to have a good outcome. So to our last question, is AI making programming obsolete? I'm arguing that AI is actually making programmers much more productive rather than obsolete. So now let's go ahead and summarize why should you be learning data science? Why is Python the language of choice? And why is now a particularly good time? Why data science? Well, we said that data skills are becoming increasingly essential across industries as software and data are eating the world. We've also explained and seen how Python is the most versatile and the most popular tool uh, for data science. And so if you have the Python skill set, you really have access to a very large uh, labor market. Okay, And now, indeed, is the perfect time to get into data science because demand is high. 
and AI tools can accelerate your learning and your productivity. So hopefully with these words, you feel a renewed enthusiasm and confidence for this decision to uh, get into Python and to get into data science. Thank you very much for listening to me and uh, I will see you hopefully in class. Bye-bye. <music>